Since we're located in Maryland, we get a lot of questions related to operating in the vicinity of Washington, D.C. As you may or may not know, a special flight rules area exists within a 30-mile radius of National Airport, essentially requiring all aircraft to be on a flight plan and talking to air traffic control. Let's go through an example flight to see how it works. We won't touch on all the aspects of flying in the DC SFRA. For that, you should do the FAA training course on it, which is required before making any flight within it. This flight will highlight just one aspect of SFRA flying, and we'll sort of set it up as a compare and contrast with how flight following works on a normal VFR flight. We're on the ground at Gettysburg in Pennsylvania, a short flight outside the northern end of the SFRA. We want to fly VFR to Lee Airport in Annapolis, Maryland. We'll plot out the route using ForeFlight. We can highlight the SFRA by tap and holding inside it, and we'll tap on the DC SFRA from the list. It's the entire green area, which includes our destination. Not only that, but the direct route has us going through the surface Bravo of BWI Airport. We'll do a course that keeps us south and west of that field. We're going to use two VFR waypoints known very well by pilots in this part of Maryland. V Ponks, which is west of Laurel, and V Poop, which is close to our destination. Why those two points? Let's have a look at the VFR flyway chart for Washington and Baltimore. There's a VFR flyway we can follow along this broad arrow here. The course between those two VFR waypoints has us follow the flyway. Transitioning west to east will be at 2,000 feet. This will keep us out of the lower Bravo to the north and east, and importantly, it'll keep us out of this area to the south and west, an area within the SFRA which carries greater restrictions known as the Flight Restricted Zone, or Freeze. The freeze is an inner area closer to DC which restricts general aviation to only very specific operations. Our SFRA flight to Annapolis won't allow us to enter, so the flyway is important as it keeps us clear of it within the SFRA. As I said, we need a flight plan to enter the SFRA. Here's the spot we'll be entering at. The entire circle of the area is divided up into different gates. We identify this area as the Woolly Gate. Further to the west, on the other side of the 341 radial the DCA VOR indicated here, it would be the Lucky Gate. We'll need this when we do our flight plan, which we can do on ForeFlight. So here's the weird part. For departure, we're not going to put an airport, we're going to put the Woolly Gate. Just write Woolly. ATC doesn't care that we're coming from Gettysburg or really anything about our flight prior to reaching the SFRA. They just want to know how we're entering. Destination will be KANP for Annapolis, and under flight rules, we actually have an option for VFR DC SFRA. We want to choose that one. The time of the flight should be such that we arrive at the SFRA no earlier than one half hour before and no later than two hours after. The rest of the info would be filled in as normal, and we could file that. So we'll depart from Gettysburg as normal and head out towards the DC area. We're going to need to get in contact with Potomac Approach prior to entering the SFRA. We could request flight following soon after departing Gettysburg if we wanted to. This would normally involve a handoff to the proper controller for the SFRA, but we'll demonstrate a cold call here. On the flyway chart, as well as some other charts of the DC area, we see that to contact Potomac for SFRA entry in this area, we want to use 132.77. So we key that in and flip it active. Here's what we can say. Potomac approach, that's the 518 Foxtrot Tango approaching Willie Gate. We could add in more like where we're going or more precise position info, but we're talking to a controller dedicated to SFRA ops who sees our flight plan, so everyone knows what we want here. When they identify our flight plan, they'll come back with a transponder code. November 518 Foxtrot Tango Potomac Approach Squawk 5325. We'll enter that squawk code. ATC will be looking for us on radar to identify us just as they would for flight following. When they see us, they'll say, November 8 Foxtrot Tango Transponder Observe Proceed on Course Remain Outside Class Bravo Airspace Baltimore Altimeter 29908. So a couple things with this call. We're now okay to enter the SFRA. If that wasn't clear to you from the language, you're not alone. There's no clearance into the SFRA because it's not airspace you can be cleared into like Bravo. The fact that the controller can see us and has let us know as much is all we need to be okay to enter. If you're unsure, you can always confirm. Also, the controller said transponder observed. Usually you hear radar contact. Radar contact is a specific term, meaning we've been radar identified and radar services are being provided, like we'd get on an IFR flight or on flight following. That's not exactly what's happening here. 
were not on flight following, Potomac controllers are advised to provide traffic and radar services to aircraft on a workload permitting basis, but we shouldn't assume this is being done just because we're talking to someone. Just the same, most of the traffic callouts will be provided as they normally are. So we proceed into the SFRA. As we approach the flyway, we descend to 2000 so we can transition through. We may get a handoff to another Potomac sector, or we may just stay with this controller. We're going to be looking for Lee Airport, and when we see it, we let Potomac know. This is very similar to ending flight following. Potomac 518 Foxtrot Tango has Lee Airport in sight. This will be a full stop landing. We need to tell them it'll be a full stop as opposed to we're going to be staying in the pattern or something. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, remain on your signed transponder code until you land. Frequency change approved. So we're good to switch over to CTAF, which we'll do. Notice they didn't say radar services terminated because, again, we never had radar services. Also, very important, we weren't told to squawk VFR. Never squawk VFR in the SFRA. This is the easiest way to get a big violation because it communicates that you're flying in special airspace trying to be incognito. Stay on the code they assigned us all the time. Resist the urge and habit of hitting that VFR button on the transponder. And from there, we make our landing as normal. Again, we didn't cover a bunch of other issues with the SFRA, like departure, transitions, flight within the area, multi-leg flights, and pattern work. If this is a topic that generates a lot of interest, we might expand this into a series of videos to help pilots out flying in the DC area. Let us know in the comments, and check out Flight Insight Ground School today at the link here or in the description.